Hello and welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to talk to you about constipation. So if constipation isn't a problem that you have, it's not a problem that you're facing, it's not a symptom that you have to deal with, today's video is probably not for you, but I would encourage you, please share or tag this with somebody that is constipated. Because being constipated is a serious, serious problem. It's one of the, like if you don't fix this problem, it's going to make everything else you do very ineffective. Because this is like, the foundation of how your body removes toxins from itself so whatever you're doing you know you can do all the detox you can do the fasting you can do all the different supplements you can do the perfect diets like if you don't poo you don't heal it just doesn't happen and if that's not you please share it with somebody that is because they they, they need to hear this and it's and and if this is you or if somebody has shared this with you then welcome we're gonna talk about why this is such a sinister problem and actually provide you with some solutions and these aren't just going to be the bulk standard, like crappy ones you get from the doctor's office, you know. You need to drink more water. You should take this fiber supplement. Maybe you should lose some weight. Or maybe you should walk or move more, you know. Not helpful. Doesn't 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 fix fix the problem. I'm actually going to give you some solutions today. And, I'm, and I'll also tell you, I'll, 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 I'll say this. I work with people one-to-one -one resolving constipation and I have about an 80% success rate in six to eight weeks. So this is a this is a solvable problem. I have other videos on YouTube about this. This isn't the first time I'm talking about it. This is solvable. I've I've done it. I've been I've gone from 10 days constipated, you know, bloody hemorrhoids, really solid, like really hard stool to bowel movement every single day. Like no problems. And you can do this too, you know, I, it's not, I'm not the first, I've, I did this obviously first with myself, I've done this with hundreds of people as well. So, solution to that, you can fix this problem, you just have to understand it. Today I want to focus a little bit more on why this is so bad, and I'm going to touch on some solutions, but I have other videos about that that I'll reference, to, uh, reference you to towards the end. Why is constipation so bad? Why is it, why is it the first thing that you need to focus on and fix and solve if you're, if you're constipated? So, everybody knows. I mean, and if you don't know this, again, like, where have you been? Like, have you even been on the internet in the last decade? All of your disease begins in your gut. Hippocrates, father of West, Western medicine, all disease begins in the gut. If your gut has some dysfunction, there's a, you need to, you need to fix it. You need to look at that. That's a really high priority. And constipation, I would say, is top of this list. Because if you don't have a regular bowel movement, that stool that stays inside your body... Is, is there's a there's a process that occurs called auto intoxication, which basically means you're poisoning yourself from the inside out. So you can think about, I mean, you don't have to be a genius to figure this out. You know, you can think about poo. You know, imagine the smell. Like you know, it's like toxic. You know, it's full of stuff that you you actually want to get out of your body. You don't have to be a genius. You don't have to have like a a medical science degree or anything to know that you want poo out of your body. You know, <laughs> the longer it's in your body, the the worse that is. And this is because your body uses it like bowel movements to remove uh, like i would say a majority like 80 80 percent plus toxicity that your body is exposed to so this is toxins from your environment this is toxins produced in your own gut and this is toxins toxins produced in your own body as well being alive produces toxins like when your body is functioning when your cells are like creating energy they create reactive oxygen species like proteins get denatured things get broken down you have waste you know that's part of life i mean you know what it's like living in a, in a building there's always stuff that needs to go in the bin there's always stuff that needs to leave the system and that's what your bowel movements do in your internal system you know they allow things to go they allow you to let go of things especially toxicity so the reason that this is so harmful is when you aren't letting th these toxins go you are auto intoxicating yourself your body does this very um synchronized job of taking toxins packaging them up in bile putting them into your digestive system your microflora works to break them down and bind them and and do different things to them and then they're supposed to be removed but if you aren't having frequent bowel movements your body does all of this work and then the toxin just leaks back in it just leaks through your gut back into your body and then your body has to do the whole process all over again. And it takes resources. It takes energy. It takes time. It takes effort. And your body is doing all of this to do a job that it already did and is now having to redo because the job didn't complete fully. You know, it's like it did... Think I'll put this in terms of a of a of maybe something relatable. So it's like you've got an essay to write for a project at school. You write the whole thing... And then you don't send it in, an, in the email. It's like you did all of the hard work. You did everything. You don't submit it at the end. You fail. You have to do the whole course again. 
This is what's happening inside of your body if you don't have the bowel movement at the end. Your body does this whole cascade, like all of this hard work. Phase one, phase two, liver detox, bile secretions, microbiome, using antioxidants, nutrients, like this whole complex process that you honestly couldn't even fathom, even if you tried to. Like there's so much intricacy and nuance and detail that goes into this. Your body does the whole thing and then it has to start again, right from the beginning on the thing that it already did. You know, it, it wrote the whole paper out and now it has to write the same paper again. So if your bowels aren't moving correctly, your body is, you're exhausting it. It is just draining resources. It's like you're trying to fill up a cup and it doesn't even have a bottom, you know, it's just going straight through. Your body's trying really hard and it's getting nowhere. This is also really important because you've, you now can't remove toxins from your body. And when you can't remove toxins from your body, your body has to do something about it. This is the primary mechanism. This is where 80% of these toxins are going to leave. If it can't put it out this way, it's going to try and put it through the three backup mechanisms that we have. The three backup mechanisms being the urine, the sweat, and, and, and like the skin surface, and, and exhalation. So we can breathe some toxins out as well. But when this is happening, like these are backup mechanisms. These aren't really the main way that these things are supposed to leave the body. So this can cause symptoms in these different areas. You know, this can cause interstitial cystitis. This can cause bladder infections. This can cause urinary tract infections. This can cause problems in the kidneys, kidney stones. This can cause a lot of different problems in these associated areas. This can cause skin problems like acne, psoriasis, um, even like like peeling, flaky, like dandruff, even skin infections like candida, toenail fungus. These can all be because your body's trying to push toxins out through the skin because it can't push them out through the way that it actually wants to. If it's trying to push them out through the lungs, you can get all different types of respiratory problems. You know, you can get the post-nasal drip, like I know how annoying that is. Sinus infections, you can get asthma, you can get all, like basically any condition that's connected with your, with your lungs. These can all be connected because your body is trying to push toxins out through these. Another layer to this is when you are experiencing autoimmune symptoms in these areas. So autoimmune skin problems, autoimmune lung problems, autoimmune bladder problems. As the toxins are uh, bioaccumulating in these tissues, the body triggers an immune reaction against them. Your body will prioritize to detox toxins if it can. If it can't, it will activate the immune system to attack them instead. So this is why, so if you've got, say, like MCAS, CIRS, um, chemi multiple chemical sensitivity, your body is overwhelmed with toxins, and it, it's, it, the, those primary mechanisms are overwhelmed. So it's like, okay, we'll, we'll activate the immune response. We'll activate the mast cells. We'll release histamine. We'll attack this in a different way. We'll go about trying to solve this problem in a different way because the way that the body's trying to solve it can't. So this is going to put a lot of extra pressure and a lot of extra weight on all of these other systems. This also encourages your body to develop parasites and pathogens. First of all, you've got basically food mass in the gut, like parasites, organisms, they love to eat these things. So they're going to eat them first of all. But secondly, these things are, are toxic. Like if you've got a lot of toxins that are being held in the gut and they're reabsorbing, the body will say, okay, let's move something in there to try and I bind some of these things to try and um, keep some of these things in the gut and then you develop worms you know and the worms they're eating your stool because they're holding the toxicity in your gut because there's nowhere for it to actually go you can never resolve the like the parasites the yeast candida things like that if you aren't having bowel movements because you're just bioaccumulating toxins and your body is adapting and it's trying to survive the best way that it knows how so you can see symptoms everywhere you can and, and a final final point here, the the liver is so strongly influenced by what's happening in your gut. If your gut is going well, your liver will love it. Like it really helps your liver. If your gut is struggling, the liver is the place that's going to take the most damage. This is because every single thing that comes from your digestive system, before it reaches your your, your, your full circulatory system, it goes through the portal hepatic vein through to the liver first. So your liver does all of this hard work putting all these toxins into the, into the stool and then they reabsorb, they go straight back to the liver. So if you've got liver dysfunction, if you've got liver disease, if you've got NAFLD, if you've got um, gallbladder problems, you know, if you've had to have your gallbladder removed in the past or you have gallstones or things like that and you have constipation, like the, the, this, is the, this is the thing you have to fix first. 
because all of this is just putting so much weight on your on your liver and your liver is just not it's just not going to be able to to keep up it like it's impossible it's doing the whole job and then it doesn't get the outcome it has to do the whole job all over again and when your liver struggles your whole body will struggle you will have low energy you'll have brain fog and fatigue you'll feel lethargic you just won't really feel animated you won't feel in love with life you just won't be able to stretch all the way to do all the things that you want to do with your life you'll be like half showing up here procrastinating that not able to put enough effort and love into relationships and to your family life not able to really like like passionately pursue your career because you ju you just don't have the energy you just can't and it's because all this energy is being used by your liver doing the same jobs over and over and over again and never getting the outcome which is the bowel movement at the end so how do we fix it totally solvable problem again i want to re-emphasize this i was constipated for more than 10 days you know i would have 10 days before a bowel movement for at least six months i think maybe even a year this is like on this more severe end uh I've had clients at this stage as well, you know, I've worked, so I, I also say this, not, not, I'm not trying to show off like, oh yeah, look at all these clients, what I'm trying to say is it's not a one-time thing, you know, I didn't just do it to myself, I've helped other people do it as well, and if I've done it, and I've helped hundreds of other people do it too, then you can do it as well, you know, we're not special and unique, like we're, we have bodies that are very similar, yeah, they're all very nuanced and different in their own ways, but 80% is the same, you know, and if these other people have done it and I've done it, then you can do it as well. And I want you to really focus on that and be solutions orientated because if you're not, you'll get told, oh, oh it's chronic, oh, it's IBS, it's, it's genetic, like you just kind of have to deal with it. It's like, no, you actually can solve it. So don't let other people just tell you you have to live with this or that it's like fine. It's really not. It predisposes you to so many different types of health problems. It's fixable and you really need to fix it. Like this is I would say this is number one priority. If you have constipation, you need to fix this fast. So how do we fix it? I want to say, first, I'm going to touch on all of the points, but if you want a more detailed guide, I have like a 40 minute long YouTube video that walks you through the formula to create the perfect bowel movement. You can just go on YouTube and type William Dickinson constipation solved 80 plus percent success rate. You will find that video. It walks you through every single step, like with with a deep level of detail you know you will know exactly what you're doing after you watch that video so you can go and watch that video now or you can finish to the end i'm going to summarize those points so i can give them to you in bullet points and then you'll have more of an idea of what the what that video is going to contain so perfect bowel movement consists of a couple of things first of all you've got the the, the liquid the hydration so hydration in your body isn't just about drinking water it's about drinking the right type of water and it's about having the right balance of electrolytes there's a lot of different ways you can do this. My number one suggestion, if you're able to tolerate it, is to use vegetable juice. It gives you structured water. It's basically distilled rainwater that comes down, and then your body, um, the, the plants structure it. They're living, they're a part of nature. They, they make it a very useful, a, a very viable form of, of water for your body. They also have the correct blend of electrolytes, so the magnesium, the potassium, the sodium, and the trace minerals as well. Very important in having the... In having healthy bowel movements it's an easy like you can do this in a more complicated way you know if you do have intolerances you can use electrolyte powders and you can use distilled water or reversals like it's really complicated if you can just do juice like just do it it's so much easier yeah it's a bit expensive yeah it's a lot of hassle yeah it's a lot of work but so is being sick you know and you don't want to be sick forever like this is the easiest way to do it if you can do it do juice so sort the the hydration out get the electrolytes right um, next step will be the solid components of the, of, of, of the stool, of the bowel movement. So you've got living and dead bacteria. Your actual bowel movement, like when you go to the toilet, like what you see there is 80% living and dead bacteria. It's mostly bacteria. So it makes you think, maybe the ingredient for a good bowel movement might be living and dead bacteria and the things that make them. So that's absolutely correct. A lot of the time, people with constipation, especially if you your tendency is towards... Um, small or like very hard stools is a flora deficiency a microflora deficiency so we've actually we don't have enough of the rock the correct species of microbes in our gut and they're not providing us enough bulk to create an actual healthy stool with the right consistency so high dose probiotic is the way to go if you have other problems like chronic fatigue syndrome or histamine intolerance or 
other types of gut dysbiosis problems. You need to start on a very small dose and work your way up over time. I, again, I have another YouTube video you can watch on this called the Goldilocks Zone. This is how you can use probiotics to get the maximum benefits without making yourself feel bad, you know, without giving you the horrible detox reactions, the Herxheimer reactions. Like if you're doing that, that's actually not helping you heal. You're, you're, you're just pushing against your body and you're, you're not really getting anywhere. The magic with taking supplements and especially things like probiotics is taking as much as you're able to without causing any negatives. So if you take a bunch of probiotics and they give you diarrhea or they make you more constipated, you've actually not helped yourself. You've actually made the problem worse. So that video, the Goldilocks Zone, so again, you can go on YouTube and type William Dickinson, the Goldilocks Zone. It walks you through how to find your optimal dose of probiotics and build it up gradually over time so that you can restore the microflora to your gut and then you're able to have a, a bowel movement again. Next thing I would look at would be uh, soluble fiber. So this is not the same as what, when you go to the doctor's office and they say, oh, here's some Metamucil, or here's some psyllium husk, or here's a fiber supplement. Like, that's not the right type of fiber that your gut needs. If you, if you actually look into it, and you can, go and you can go on Google Scholarly, you can look at the articles. Constipation is inversely correlated with fiber, which means if you if you are constipated and you take fiber, it actually makes constipation worse. So reducing fiber, and in, in, this, in this test, in these um, studies, they're looking at insoluble fiber. So this is the psyllium husk. This is the, these aggressive, harsh types of fibers. These actually make you more constipated, and reducing these can be helpful. But ones that do help you, the, the, the type of fiber that is very helpful for constipation is soluble fiber. Soluble basically means it's the type of fiber that can dissolve in water. So this isn't the the really harsh fiber of like kale leaves or, or like the psyllium husk or these these fiber supplements. This is a very useless form of fiber. It's very irritating to the gut. It's not very helpful. It actually makes constipation worse. And you probably know that already, you know? You probably had these problems, go to the doctor, you, you tell the doctor and he says, oh, here's a fiber supplement and your constipation actually gets worse. Or maybe it makes your stool bigger, but it's still really hard, it's still really dry, it's still not a healthy bowel movement and it's still irregular. It's the wrong type of fiber. So soluble fiber is what we want. Soluble fiber you find in um, softer fruits and vegetables. So for example, imagine like a mango. A mango, you can imagine that fiber in there is very soft. You can, there's a lot, there's soluble fiber in everything. It's just there are some things that have more insoluble fiber. So again, juicing is really nice here because with, with juicing, basically what you're doing is you're concentrating the soluble fiber, which is the type of fiber that you want, and you're removing the insoluble fiber, which is the part that makes constipation worse and gives you more problems. So juicing is a really nice option here because it allows you to concentrate what you want and then side benefit, you also get the electrolytes, the hydration, and there's a bunch of other benefits to juicing as well. Amazing, amazing modality if you're able to tolerate it. So you've got you've got that, and it removes all of the insoluble fiber, which is the one that's actually correlated with making constipation worse. Those things alone are more than likely enough to resolve this this problem. Like in I would say sixty to eighty percent of of people that I work with, these changes alone, we give it four, six, eight weeks maybe is enough. Again, it depends on your probiotics, how quickly you're able to increase your dose. Some people are more sensitive and it takes some time. Some people can just jump right in at like 200 billion, 400 billion CFUs and they're like, oh, constipation's fixed in a week. It's like, that's possible. But I know that if, when I had really bad constipation and I had all of my other chronic health problems, the CFS, the food sensitivities, autoimmune problems, if I jumped in at a dose like that, it would not have been helpful for me. It would have been way too far at the end of my Goldilocks zone, it would have made all of my symptoms worse. So again, if you're not sure, watch that other video, it's very helpful. It's a detailed guide that helps you learn how to use supplements, especially things like probiotics, correctly in a way that's actually helpful for you and moving you towards health instead of just making you feel really bad, giving you a bunch of symptoms and not really changing anything. So to recap, staying constipated is quite literally the single worst thing you can do if you wanna heal. If you aren't pooping, your body cannot remove toxins. You're encouraging the, the growth of parasites and pathogens and dysbiotic organisms. Your body is working 10 times harder 
to do the same amount of work, you're burning through nutrients, you're burning through resources, you're not clearing the debt of work that your body has, it's just trying to stay afloat. I don't say these things to scare you, I say these things to help you see the gravity of the situation. If I just wanted to scare you, I'd just leave it at that. But I'm presenting you with solutions. There are things you can do. You need to correct electrolyte imbalances and provide a, the correct type of water for your body for it to, to function. It needs to be hydrated. But it's not just drink, drink more water and drink five liters a day. It's use vegetable juice that has the correct blend of electrolytes because nature formulated it. It knows the right kind of electrolytes that we need to have in the right balance. Provide the soluble fibers that help the bowel move, remove those insoluble fibers that actually exacerbate constipation, and replenish the correct microflora. I have a lot of videos on my channel about probiotics, but just to give you a, a brief idea, a, a blend of lactobacillus and bifidobacterium strains is your best option. I would not take one with prebiotics initially, so no fructooligosaccharides, no inulin, no, no, no prebiotics. They probably make constipation worse. You just want probiotics and an effective dose starts at about 10 billion CFUs. If that's too high for you, go slower. Again, check out the Goldilocks zone, William Dickinson on YouTube to figure out how to dose your probiotics. But 10 billion is usually a good place to start. And then you want to increase that potentially. Again, this is individual dependent some people need doses just upwards of a trillion cfus which is very high but you have to listen to your body and see what your body's saying you know if you can take a trillion cfus of probiotics and you don't have constipation anymore like listen to your body it's smart you fix the problem that's what it needed but that's not the case for everyone so you kind of have to play it by ear again please watch that video because it something that's very frustrating for me is when people say like you're telling me to do things that are like bad for me but Go and watch the other videos I'm telling you to watch and it helps you understand how you can do them without them hurting you and them actually being attuned to your individual body. Healing is a very personalized process and it's very hard to give you a uniform one-size-fits-all thing in a video because we're not all one-size-fits-all. We're actually one-size-fits-one and you're individual. But this is a general rule of thumb that you can follow and if you can watch these other supporting videos, you can fine-tune and tweak this approach so that it will actually... Be, be personalized and perfected for you. So you don't have to be constipated anymore. You can start having great bowel movements. You can fix your food sensitivities. You can let these toxins go, which are the things that are causing adrenal fatigue, chronic fatigue syndrome, brain fog, autoimmune disorders, SIBO and gut dysbiosis, parasites, all of these other things, because they're all adaptive responses to toxicity. Fix the toxicity problem, the other problems, they fix themselves. Hope you found today's video really helpful. If you do have any questions, please let me know. I'll get back to every single one. Do tag me though, so that I get a notification that you have left a comment. Uh, obviously I can't respond if I don't know that you've, that you've left me a question. So make sure you tag me. I hope it's been really helpful and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.